of identification of the region. To begin with, let's ask the question, what is a region? The answer is very simple and I am sure most of you know it. A small portion of a vast land is called a region. But at the same time, it is not as simple as it looks because neither there is any limit to how vast an area can be nor to how small a part can be. However, what makes a region more significant are the common characteristics of that region. In geography, the concept of a region is very important. A particular region focuses on a particular area of the earth. A region studies the physical as well as the human aspect which interact with each other and work in unity. These factors provide relative homogeneity which becomes the foundation of regional approach. Let us brush up on these factors of a region. A. Physical factors. These factors are relatively static as compared to the other factors. Physical factors are fundamental for regional planning and development. B. Human aspect. Man is the driving force to develop the region. Due to his vision and hard work, we can make sure that the region will be well developed. Now since we know what a region is, let us learn about regionalization. The process of dividing an area into smaller segments is called regionalization. Like we have the division of a nation into states and states into districts. Why is regionalization so essential? It is essential because the region is a base for economic development and very important in many historical, political, economical and sociological analysis. Regions are demarcated in such a way that there is very little variation but at the same time, each region is extremely different from the other. The basis for regionalization is very different, therefore, different regions may be delimited according to the criteria that is used. Now, let us look at some of the features that a region may have. Number 1. A region is a specific area. It can be a small or a large geographic area. To solve various problems, it is best to have small regions. Number 2. It can be a mountainous or a plain area. Number 3. It can also be an urban or a rural area. Number 4. Regions may be nodal, distinct by the association of activity of some central place, like a town and its hinterland. Number 5. It may also be the homogeneous distribution of some phenomena within it like coniferous forests, tropical forests, etc. Now let's learn about the core areas of a region. Each region has one or more core areas. The geographical pattern of each core area is excellently developed. The uniqueness around these core areas become less apparent. However, they never lose regional characteristics. Another important question that comes to our mind is, on what basis are regions identified? The factors on which regions are identified are, number one, on the basis of common characteristics, contiguity, personality and similarity. For example, mountainous regions, climatic regions, forest regions, administrative regions, etc. Number 2. It can also be identified on the basis of one or multiple factors like economic regions are based on economic factors like industries, transportation, 
levels of development, etc. Number 3. Agricultural regions are formed according to crops, crop combination, etc. Number 4. Social and cultural regions are identified on the basis of factors like population, sex ratio, migration, language, etc. Did you know that even a region has hierarchy? The word hierarchy means more than one level. So in regional hierarchy, at each higher level, the region is larger, more complex, but generalized. For example, in the hierarchy of administrative region, a village which is the smallest portion of the administrative system will be at the base. It will be followed by a block, then the taluka, then the district, then the state, followed by the country and finally the continent will be at the peak since it is the largest and most complex of all. Let us learn about physical regions. Physical regions can be identified on the basis of physical factors like origin, location, landforms, climate, relief, forests, soils, minerals, etc. Physical regions are divided by natural boundaries like rivers, mountains, hill ranges, etc. Boundaries for these regions are drawn roughly on maps because these boundaries are mostly in the form of transitional zones. Besides physical regions, we also have political and administrative regions which have well demarcated boundaries and are shown accurately on the map.